Hey, what's that? Food delivery woman's here. This is a taco salad. Oh. Hey, Cannon, you have some hair on your face. Well, sorry, Cannon. I don't know where it came from. Is that video making fuel? Yeah. All right. Thanks. Over here, my pretty. I've got a pretty big problem. We get all this raw milk from a local dairy. They only allow us two gallons a week because another local dairy closed down and they have too many customers to satisfy. The problem is we don't always use both gallons that we get every week. So it's starting to pile up. We just picked up two fresh gallons this week but we've still got a gallon from last week. I've got a solution. Preserving food for us right now is really difficult because we have very limited refrigerator and freezer space. While there's a lot of ways to preserve raw milk, uh, we have a preferred way, let's just say that. This milk is not pasteurized and it is full fat and it comes from a Jersey cow. Can you see the amount of cream sitting on top of this milk? also just happens ice cream is kind of like a currency somebody in this world doesn't like ice cream we just haven't met them yet the local thrift store we ran into this guy that's right hand crank ice cream freezer this home build we have had to take out a ton of ious for dinner dessert weekend chores whatever because we've been so busy, we haven't had any time to really spend much time with some of our friends locally. Tomorrow, we've got a dessert date, and guess what we're bringing? Also found, this is an amazing thing to have on hand because you never know when you might need to ask a favor of a neighbor and you can give them a little bit of ice cream. Wanting to goof around with scarf joints. I've got a piece of timber that's sitting over here. I've been looking at it. So tonight, I'm gonna make ice cream and play scarf joint. Let's see if we can get a scarf built in the time it takes for the ice cream to freeze. Let's do the crash course in what is a scarf joint and why would you want one? A scarf joint is used to lengthen a timber. For example, if you have a house that's 36 feet and you have a post here, you may want to join those timbers here over this post with a scarf joint. But in most cases, this is an all wood joint. There are many versions of the scarf joint, but the one I want to play with tonight is called a stop splayed scarf. It's probably one of the most common scarfs you'll see. The goal of a scarf joint is to create a joint that is extremely strong in many directions. So the joint looks something like this, and maybe there's pegs here, 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 and here, and maybe we have a post that is coming up through here and there's a tenon that penetrates these two scarf joints. So here's timber number one and here's timber number two. In some cases, this joint would be used where a post would come down from above. So you'd have a post and a tenon maybe penetrating into something like a top plate. In that case, you may actually put this joint beside the post above here so that you don't have too much going on in this one area. In which case, this might fall over a wind brace on one side. These are our family of scarf people. These are the cutoffs from a lot of the beams that were used in our house. For example, this is an eight by 15, was our tie beam. This looks like an eight by 10, which means it was probably a top plate. This is a chunk of leftover brace stock from the frame build. 
It's a perfect piece to practice a scarf joint on because it's nice and small. Instead of working with 8x10 timbers, which are large and difficult to move, this one should be pretty easy to maneuver. The thing that we should know about scarf joints is even though it would be really awesome if we could just make the scarf joint lay it out something like this and cut it, we can't. Because there's no way to make this cut right here at least not easily. So we actually need to cut this piece in half first, and then we'll need to lay out our scarf on either side, and then we'll have to join the pieces together. If this dimension here were 24 feet, and this were 24 feet, you would actually need a timber that's slightly longer in order to create this joint. How do you guys think I did? Let's check it for square. It's pretty good. Got a high spot right there in the middle. I'll give this a crank or two. All right, so now we've got two equal pieces. And now we can begin laying out the joint. We use a method of measuring called baseline measuring. So we're going to pull all of our measurements from one side of our timber and we're going to transfer those around. I've laid out the dimensions, the baseline dimensions of our timber. Let's lay it out. All right, all of our baseline dimensioning is done. We've got all of our measurements from one end in one corner and then I've transferred those lines all the way around. Uh-oh, looks like I forgot to darken this set of lines. So as you noticed, I'm using a marking knife to make extremely fine lines, and then I'm going back and darkening it with my pencil. So if I could have my way, when I cut my scarf, my scarf man would be this side. I'm gonna make him a smiley face. And my goal would be to remove this chunk of wane from the joint. So my joint is going to look something like this. It's going to come across here and terminate here. And when I do that, this whole piece, wane and all, we're going to remove. It would have actually been better to lay it out with the scarf joint over here. My scarf joint is going to fall right over this knot. So the least of all evils, I think, would be to remove this knot. So this scarf joint is going to fall something like this. scarf lines are laid out and marked so now we need to move on to cutting and I think I'm gonna cheat just a hair on this long cut uh, it's gonna take me a long time to do it by hand so I think I'm gonna hit that with the Milwaukee saw and then we'll finish these two cuts by hand
there's a chance that ice cream's gonna beat us. I think we should cut the next one faster. Melissa decided to join me. How's it going? It's good. Oh, good. Do you know what I'm doing? Making a scarf joint. I'm playing scarf. Mm, nice. Seems appropriate given the season. It's kind of a race. So the ice cream is yeah. brewing, freezing, brewing, whatever. The goal is to get this done before that's ready. Mm, and it's getting close. Yeah. Try to turn it. Really? Yeah. Gotta turn it slow though, don't break it. Right? It'll loosen up. It's just frozen on the outside. Oh yeah. It is loosening up. Oh, we still got time. We've now given birth to two scarf babies. Wow. And they get to join our scarf family. Claire over in the corner. <laughs> I don't know what face we should draw on them. Should we put diapers on them, do you think? Yeah, totally. Little diapers and a little like googly face and a tummy. Yeah. You cute little things, you. Off cuts went really good. Now, my lines here, all I need to do is use my chisel and cut these back to my lines. That's probably the most tedious uh, part of this whole process. If you look really closely, there's my line right there. So I used the saw and I held off maybe a 16th, in some places maybe an eighth, and in other places, <clears throat> even worse. <laughs> like here, like three-eighths of an inch, I don't know. So that might take me a little while, but um, this is probably the most rewarding and fun part of the process. Last piece, and then we can check to see if it fits. What do you think? Think it'll fit together? Moment of truth. Here we go. Moment of truth. Here we go. Oh, something's hitting. 
What is it, do you think? I can't tell. Looks like we're hitting over here. Oh, look, I didn't even finish this. How the heck did that pass quality control? See if she'll pass for a scarf joint here. Oof. She looks like a scarf joint anyway. I'm pretty proud of what I was able to accomplish in the amount of time that it took the ice cream to freeze, but I can see that I need to deepen these two kind of crotch areas to get a full engagement on this joint. I think I want to play with this even more. I'm not done with this scarf joint. I think we should do a weight test. We should first figure out how we want to keep it in place, whether we want to put a tenon or something in the middle here and mortise down through so they can't pull apart, or maybe we can just put a ratchet strap on the outsides and see if we can keep it from falling apart. Look at that, pretty good already. Usually, to finish off this ice cream, I have to crank for maybe three to four minutes before it reaches optimal stiffness. So I'm gonna finish this up and then hopefully, nah, who am I kidding? Alyssa's gonna help me eat it. All right, time for a visual check. See how we did. Oh, she's acting frozen. Ooh, nice. I think it's ready.